You're listening to Conversations with Club Right, the podcast where we delve into what it's like owning a business in the fitness industry and offer practical insight to help you grow and thrive. It's been a challenging few years for us all, so join us every Tuesday for new episodes where we talk about everything from member retention in the economic climate we're currently in to building a long-term growth strategy for your club, as well as stories of when I ran my gym. So I'm your host, Wayne Heath, looking forward to getting into this episode. So welcome back, listeners, to Conversation with Club Right, uh, episode two, or episode season two, episode three. Maybe I'll get that right the first time around. <laughs> well, let's get started. So wanted to kind of go through a little bit more about finances. Real key to everyone. It's no secret for a lot of people that it's been pretty tough um, post-COVID, pre-COVID, and during the whole period, it's been a, t- uh, a difficult time. And someone who... Uh, I'm really proud to have with us today. Debbie Hancock is very key to helping so many people in that kind of situation and trying to make the most of what numbers are suggesting to them, uh, what trends might be taking place. And there's uh, some great insight that Debbie's going to take us through, which hopefully will give some nice looks at how you can battle the current economic climate in a more productive way rather than worry and getting stressed out about it. Because let's be fair, it is a difficult time and it can be stressful, but equally, sometimes that inbound stress can cause maybe a, a, a decision that maybe wasn't a decision you could have made if you had time to think about it. So welcome, Debbie. Thank you for joining us and appreciate your time. In between, I noticed on social media at the weekend, again, out and about park runs. <laughs> what? Really? How do you find time for this? Yeah, it was like, I think zero degrees and it felt like minus three and it it was cold, yeah. But it was the first one I've done in a long time because I went over on my ankle in August. Um, yes, that's it, I remember. Yeah, so I've been going to the gym and using the treadmill to nice. um, yeah, get back up to fitness. So I've seen it on socials, five kilometres at the weekend after four months checking you out. <laughs> it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I think after the National Fitness Awards on Friday, I would have been lucky to do four metres, let, <laughs> let alone all that time. Absolutely. So I suppose it would be nice to sort of get into you telling the, the viewers who, who you are, Debbie, first. So I'm a financial coach and I help business owners to get to grips with their money, grow their business and overcome their money stories to take home the money that they want, which effectively means we look at your numbers we fix the foundations, which is pretty core cool to most businesses. That's where I find the most problems mm. um, and use tools such as forecasting to create a business that works for you. Wow. Well, really sounds very complex, but actually once you're involved in looking after customers, it's very easy, right? Yeah, no, it sounds, it can sound scary at first. I know that finance people seem scary, accountants seem scary, but actually when you start breaking it down and going back to, um, what I've been talking about a lot recently is going back to the basics, mm. collecting receipts, claiming for everything, just looking at your bank account for a start. And we take it slowly because otherwise there can be overwhelm and that's where the problems start. Indeed. Well, look, I mean, I kind of got a few questions, which I know are going to be great things for people to hear more answers to. And I may as well, I'm going to kick off on my list of questions if that's okay with you. Yeah. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Cool. So what would you say is the most overwhelming area of finance for a gym owner? What do you think that is? I mean, that's quite a an interesting question, but different for lots of other people. What do you think is the most overwhelming thing for a gym owner? I find for most it's being scared about what they will find and not wanting to know the answer to that. So therefore it's easier to avoid looking at the numbers than to face the facts. So they hide let I've seen them hide letters from HMRC. They've avoided calls from them. They just um, won't look at their numbers whatsoever. And they leave the accountants to produce the accounts, but they don't ask any questions. They sort of just 
hide. They don't know what they're signing. They sign it, and then they don't wow. look at it again. So it it's not even VAT or corporation tax, or it's simply just looking at the numbers and taking an interest in what they represent about the business. Really interesting. And, and you're talking about numbers. There was some was uh, not so long ago. Um, we had a situation where a customer's membership offers were actually so low in value, but didn't realise that the entry value was a good idea to get more people into the club, per se, and then trying to get people to sign up to a later value. So say, I don't know, join for a tenner, and then later on you're paying £30 a month a month down the road, for example, but the first month might be a tenner. And then look at the cancellation rate that went through the roof because people never wanted to go and pay the 30 quid, did they? It's those kind of things. You don't, I can see what you're saying. You kind of don't realize the impact that, and what understand what that's actually caused. It's actually caused an overwhelming drop in value overall. Yeah, we, we all do it, don't we? When you think about when we sign up to Sky TV or car insurance, the car insurance, the rules have changed, haven't they? But we sign up to these new deals. And then when it comes to renewal, we're like, I, I don't want to pay £50 a month for Sky. I've been paying 20 I'm getting the same thing. Yeah. Why should I pay you more money? And that's our mindset. So if that's our mindset, why is that going to be any different to your members' mindset when it comes yeah. to your pricing and the value you're offering? You're like, you've still got the same machines. Like, yeah. why has it, why has yeah. it gone up? So, yeah, the level of service hasn't changed, so why am I paying more? Yeah, and people think I'll get them in the door and then you can show them the value, which can work sometimes, but there needs to be a real understanding of actually this is a one-off price and the true cost is this and this is what everyone else pays. Mm. That's like, From the beginning, knowing that, otherwise, yeah, you will see a massive drop-off. And what happens is people won't look at that no. because that's scary. That's that you can live in denial if you don't look at the numbers. And... It's an interesting point you said that, that the denial bit is a really important word. And that's, the reason I say that is that would you say overwhelming? It sounds like from a, a point of where this question started is that a lot of people are in denial about how much they're really turning over in the first place. Maybe yeah, not even but... understanding how much they're turning over and what they're yeah, expecting. Yeah, so a lot of people won't know. So they might refer to it as turnover, income, money in, because the word turnover can sometimes be confusing. Um, they won't necessarily know how much that is. So I've had no. businesses that have breached that threshold and not been aware of that for five, six, seven months past that threshold. Wow. And then the implications of that are massive. So What's the VAT threshold now? Is it 80? 85. It's not it's it's frozen yeah. until 25 or 26, I think. 20, yeah. yeah. So it's been frozen. Um, but they're in they're in denial because if they don't look at it, they can't, you know, they can't see the truth. And they think if they just work harder, if they just keep trying, if they just get more leaves, it will fix itself. Yeah. And you can see why we believe that because years ago, like when you were paid hourly, just work harder, get more money. Like yeah, of course. So it's easy to see where that mindset comes from, but. All that's really happening is actually you could be getting leads in and just leaking it all out the back end. Yeah. And as you, the longer you remain in denial, the worse and worse the situation gets. And actually, you can never trade out of it. No, so, you can't. And it's a bit like that net gain scenario, isn't it? You know, you might start off the month with 100 members, as an example, sell 20, but lose 10. You have still grown by 10. If you started off with 100, you know, sell 20 but lose 30 you've gone back to 90 and it's that whole, that whole you know don't well it's more about getting that balance of how balance many people we've got coming in versus how many we're losing like you're saying it's that whole denial bit isn't it it's really quite quite important yeah and it, it flows through the whole business so i will talk about the money side and the money side links to retention so what's yeah. your retention like and using um apps such as like Clubbrite and other ones to see what's the number of people coming in, how many people are at risk of leaving, yeah. how many have left, um, and 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 being brave enough to to look at those numbers, indeed, uh, and come at it from a point and a business point of view rather than an emotional point of view. 
Mm. Because if you think about it, a lot of them were PTs or loved the gym. Yes. And it's a real passion. And so the business side is almost second to them. Um, and they can see people on social media doing this and that. And they, they kind of neglect the business side. And it's only when things start going a little bit wrong yeah. that yeah. they start to consider it. But they're so scared, in denial, overwhelmed, that that they're not doing that part of it. Um, so picking up on that overwhelming bit, you know, it's almost like saying, well, which is kind of leads nicely into the next question, really. It's to say, like, where do you start? Because that is, you know, it's a struggle. You need to understand your finances. But, you know, I'm I'm a gym owner that has you know, got really love and very passionate about what I do, but I haven't got a Scooby-Doo about my, my business and finance side of it. Where would you recommend they start? Um, so to start with, it would be taking the time to look at your finances. So I would start really, really basic and just regularly so open your bank account regularly and look at your numbers because that bit for some people is so scary that they'd almost like close their eyes when they yep. open the bank account and pay a bill. So just by getting used to looking at your numbers that is a very basic starting point mm -hmm. and then I would start to question the costs so is this cost 100% necessary for the business yeah. is this helping you improve the business and when you start to question those costs what feelings come up like what what emotions come up, what feelings come up, that could then start yeah, to tell you what is potentially stopping you, what's, what is a block in your mind. Mm -hmm. um, so for some, for a lot of people, it's just starting to do these things, yeah. start to ask your accountant questions. Being brave, start yeah? to... Being brave. <laughs> yeah, be brave. It will be scary and it will be hard, but it will only get easier the more you do it. And it's kind of, you've got to have kind of a bit of a mindset for this, haven't you? In terms of, you know, what, you know, how would you, what would you know to be the mindset of a success? I suppose there's two questions here in a way. The mindset of someone who's struggling versus the mindset of someone that's super successful. Because you've got, you can see the polar opposites of those types of businesses, right? So you can see the mindset of someone that's clearly struggling for whatever reason that person's mindset would be interesting to know what that person's mindset is versus the mindset of someone that you just instantly you know it's a bit like going into the dragon's den right you know that they know their numbers and that's kind of you can see that because that's your bag you understand numbers and then you know and you can identify with someone that does know their numbers so give us an idea of what those two mindsets might be for, for an individual to see if they can see themselves in that so we all have money stories. Um, we all have beliefs and habits that we've built up from childhood. And it's how we perceive those stories. So, so one person might take it one way and another person might take it another way. For me, I was very much like money is scarce. I must hold on to money. Um, I can't spend it on this and that because that's a waste. Um <laughs> And that attitude meant that I was scared to spend. Uh, so I might miss opportunities. Um, it was scary to invest in my business. And it basically held me back. So nice. I came from like a scarce mindset. So using myself and Ithaca. No, it's perfect, yeah. And you can see that in other businesses where they might think, oh, I can't put my prices up because my members will think I'm greedy. Yeah. They'll see me driving this car, so they'll think, oh, they're benefiting off of me. And uh, this is genuinely things people have said to me. Yeah. Um, and there's a real closed mindset, whereas I have other gym owners who are much more happy to spend on marketing because they can see the ROI on it. They can see the return on what they're putting in if mm -hmm. an ad costs them five pound and a member pays them 40 pounds a month and that lasts for five years their lifetime value is like two grand or something yeah. so they can 
they can see that and they're much more open to taking a risk because it is all a risk, isn't it? We don't it know that it work. Um, and they're much more open to looking at their numbers and questioning things and thinking, actually, if I do this, then this will come back to me. Whereas some of the other gym owners are, they, they where well, everyone hates VAT, but <laughs> they, they focus on it. So they focus very much on payments such as VAT and corporation tax. And mm. that almost dominates their mindset. Of course. Um, whereas we can all do things to help that situation. <laughs> it's true. That's uh, very true. And paying for the accountant that will help you and paying for services that will help you. So, yeah. So it's kind of it's a kind of having a mindset of um, not being scared about things in a way, isn't it? I mean, kind of leads into thinking about where someone could be very extreme in a cost cutting measure, um, because clearly things are challenging. But sometimes it's like you could you could challenge you could make a big cost cutting decision, but it could be backed with absolutely zero information at all no data that you can actually see whether the cutting potential that supplier which could be marketing potentially that's often one that is cut maybe foolishly sometimes but hey ho um but you know it's understanding you know what what goes there was different ways of approaching these things isn't there you know it's not always about cutting costs in extreme ways because you know what kind of alternative thoughts have you got on that so like you say, like the, the, there will be people who genuinely need to cut stuff at this time and we can't play that down. There were people that genuinely are in a really bad position. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was so happy when um, they said they were going to keep the 75% rates reduction in because yeah. I know there's some of my gyms that would seriously struggle next year mm -hmm. if that wasn't in place. I thought it would be more of a tiered thing. but No. Um, However, in business, I would say that you really need to take a careful view on what you cut as it could impact your longer term future. Um, and like you said, with marketing, it's easy to say cut marketing and see it as a cost. Yeah, yeah. But actually, if that's your lead generation and that's going to cost you X, but the lifetime mm -hmm. value of a member in your gym is two for whatever K exactly. over the life plus what they spend extra on products exactly and merchandise. Right. Then actually you do need to keep spending this mm. to for the long term viability of your business. Um and it's taking that long term view over a short termism view, which is easy, people might say it's easy to say when someone's really stuck. Uh-huh. But, but measuring it is an, an interesting one as well, isn't it? Do you I mean yeah. I we see it regularly where people do not measure accurately or any measurement at all about where their leads are coming from so i've always had the mindset that if someone turned around and said to me right you know if you could you've got five different methods of marketing it may be you know facebook marketing google ads or you know but various different things you're doing right if you can work out what's working best for you surely it makes more sense if you know which one works well to spend more money on it because it's a bit like saying, well, look, if you can spend £10,000 on marketing, but because we know it's working really well on Facebook, for example, as an example, I'm not saying it's going to, so please don't think I'm advertising Facebook because I'm absolutely not. Uh, but say we'll use that as an example. Yeah? And then you know if you're going to spend 10 k here, but that's going to earn you 100 k well, we're all in, aren't we? But you've based it on on data, and I think, Without measuring and understanding things, you can waste such a lot of money. I, I had a an example years ago where we had two adverts that we used to put in for my wife and I's gyms, and we started measuring the two and very quickly realized that one, we thought one was more uh, impactful than the other, and we were totally wrong because we actually asked customers, what made you join us today? And they were telling us the yellow advertiser. And we thought it was a month for recorder, and it wasn't. It was totally fine. So we ended up saving money, but spending the same amount of money with the other advertising. I actually knew that's where people saw it because it was the free paper 
and the Romford Recorder was a paid-for paper, and people didn't buy as much of the paid-for papers, right? But it was only measurement that helps me do that. So I think, yeah, you know, like you're saying, it's trying to spend money, uh, but in the right way. So cost cutting may not always be the right thing to do. No, it it you know some people will have to cut costs. Yeah. Um, but I would say it's taking a strategic view of that and not just a haphazard cut this, cut that. So I get, oh, I'm going to do my own payroll. So I don't do any of that stuff anymore, but I'm going to do my payroll. It's easy. And it's like, yeah, wait till COVID happens or maternity leave or yeah. holiday or something. The, like the government are changing the national insurance rate in the middle of January. Like, I don't even know how that's going to ha- be handled. Because... No, I must have been glad <laughs> I've got an accountant. <laughs> Yeah, the payroll system's like, hmm. But, yeah. you know, so you can take one view and actually it's it's not quite as simple as you think. So I would regularly review your costs. So I kind of go through mine every quarter and seriously question, is this cost 100% necessary for my business? So, like, you have to have insurance. Say you're an employer, you have to have employment insurance. I have to have indemnity insurance. Of course. You know, might have to have contents insurance. You have to have that, but you can still review it and go mm. to a different provider and get quotes, which people are scared of, surprisingly still. Um, and then next next go through your costs and say, does this give me back time or money? So is it giving me time and therefore I can go and do whatever, spend more time with my family, or I'm really great at sales, so I'm going to go and do sales, yep. or where's your expertise? Use something to save you time so you can go and do what's your expertise. Or is it making you money, i.e. ads? If it's making you money, you don't want to cut it. If using software um, such as Clubrite or whatever is Love generating you leads <laughs> and, and people can sign up you know, online to your gym and that's a good post place for you to generate income, don't cut it. No. So it's... But if it's like Zoom, some of my gyms back in COVID had Zoom. They continue to pay for it. It's like, are you still using Zoom? Really? Yeah, a good point. Cut cut those costs. Or if you signed up to a free trial, which is a really good one, signed yeah. up to a trial, got looped into a contract. Yeah. Oh, actually, didn't like that. It's only £7 a month, but I'd rather it in my pocket than their pocket. 100% and they're looking after the pennies as they say the pounds look after themselves that old adage isn't it so true yeah and it compounds as well if it's seven pounds on that and 10 pounds on that and 15 pound on that actually if you could put that on an ad mm. that might generate you two leads which is worth a lifetime value of a couple of grand well that's a lot of money to be thrown away you know what there's two things you just said there i'm going to sort of just kind of delve a bit more into it's like lifetime value so that lifetime value is a really important thing for any business, especially if you are a monthly paying business. Um, and uh, we talk about lifetime value an awful lot in our business. And I actually generally think gym owners maybe don't look at the value of a customer sometimes. You know, they might think it's 30 quid a month, but keeping that customer for longer, retaining them for longer, increases the lifetime value. It's not I'm losing 30 quid a month. You might be losing two and a half grand the mm. losses are a lot, lot greater than people actually think about because they don't think about how long the average customer stays well yeah and you think of gyms like they're selling meals drinks t-shirts hats yeah. they might have um so one of my gyms just put a premium service in mm-hmm. those things all add to the lifetime value of your customer and if you lost a load of customers who buy a lot of product from you suddenly you're left with a load of product and stock that you can't get rid of so there's more to it than just the membership price and that's exactly why in club right you can see that number because you and i are aligned on that because the value of a customer isn't just their 30 quid a month membership is it it's the other things that they in enjoy using or buying uh it's a whole lot more you could lose many hundreds of pounds per month and not even realize it if you don't actually understand what that person spends with you yeah and that that data is so valuable because you think suddenly actually if that person stops turning up to the gym so regularly why is that does that mean they're thinking of leaving yeah. is it just a lifetime thing and actually you can give them a call and be like are you okay like genuinely yeah. are you okay yeah and 
something may have happened in their life and you know, I, I care about my clients like probably too much to an extent, but that's <laughs> not a bad thing. Don't just worry. <laughs> <laughs> just showing that actually you do genuinely care. Yeah. And it might be like, oh, I've injured this and I can't currently do this. And you could be like, well, maybe you could try this, this or this exercise. Like yeah. when I had done my ankle, it was like, oh, well, what can I do? Of course. You know, and I spoke to my flight teacher and she's like, well, do these things, yeah, build yeah. your ankle back up, get on the treadmill, you know etc so it's it's kind of that advice isn't it and you know people kind of forget that um it doesn't take a lot to make a big difference and that one phone call if you can identify that one of your big payers maybe has suddenly stopped coming along you haven't seen them for a few weeks now giving them that call just to say hey how's everything going debbie you know what's what's occurring you say well actually i've had a really i've damaged my ankle or like you said you've done that conversation is a very proactive conversation which means the customer is going to sit there and go, do you know what? They actually do care. Uh, I am going to keep paying my membership. And when I get back, I'll start buying those protein shakes and the other things I used to buy when I get back. But you've retained that opportunity to keep lifetime value growing. Whereas retaining, everyone talks about retention as being, I don't know, maybe a bit of a sort of a, a dark art. It's actually that not that difficult. <laughs> you know, if you just communicate to people, even saying hello to them when they come into the club is actually one of the most important things you can ever do, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know when, when I was trying to join somewhere, I was a bit nervous and I called them and then they, they never turned up to the call. And then when they did, they were like, you've got to buy all this PT stuff. And I was just like, hang on, what? <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, I've, I had injured my leg at the point. I was seeing a physio and they never called me back. Really? They never followed me up, and wow. so I joined a different gym. Which is good. And why did you join that? Because they cared, I guess. Yeah, and they had them. Um, I, I was trying to get my partner to join, <laughs> and um, they had like the bikes. So he likes skin and Bloody stuff. Up. So they had the proper bikes and spin studio. Nice. Um, and so he was up for he was up for trying it out. And now I've got oh. him on the weights. So <laughs> love that. So your major priority, really, from cost cutting is to look at what earns you income i'm guessing is what you've just described to us uh, is it is it earning you money and i suppose is it mission is it business critical yeah exactly and if it is business critical say insurance like review your insurance don't yeah. just renew like one because your business changes if your income's gone up massively if you've had a mezzanine installed yep. whatever I think yeah changed. that's a really i think it's a really good point you just said there <laughs> thanks yeah so you have to regularly review these things and go to different providers so i'm not promoting but in the independent gym group <laughs> i don't know who do... you're thinking about who are you talking about and let me have a think mm. <laughs> they, they do have um lots of different providers in there so go to them and just spend like what is an hour of your time an hour of your time it could save yeah. you a couple hundred pounds it could mean you're properly insured like go and spend that time to ask um utilities they were looking at um doing a group purchase yeah bank fees i know you guys obviously offer um something in competition to one of the big ones so mm. review that, <laughs> that you do. yeah um look at group purchasing um and what can you automate that can save you time so you can go off and earn more money so yeah. they're the things that i would look at yeah no i think that's a really i think the bit you just mentioned there about automating so you can get on with what you're best at doing that earns you money is so very important because you can get pulled down with the mediocrity of admin and like we said some of the overwhelming things we've been discussing earlier here debbie is and you start thinking well actually why the hell did i start this business in the first place it was you know yeah. to help people get results do something i enjoyed doing which was helping people get results and actually now i'm just immersed in a whole load of stuff that just doesn't allowing me to do that anymore so yeah it it's really resonates i think that really does resonate and if you look at you know kind of coming to where we are with this time of year <laughs> the temperature actually we had a frost at the weekend i'm not sure if you did but we did have a frost so um that was that was interesting thing to see because the um St. my eldest who's now learned to drive wanted me to start scraping it and i'm thinking no you've got a scraper we bought it for you for your birthday use it <laughs> don't start pouring hot water on it no no can crack the screen 
But yeah, so I had an education process at the weekend on how to scrape your windscreen. With a credit but, card. Absolutely, yeah. It works for treat actually, credit card. But uh, you know, as the temperature changes, you're kind of looking at time of year where gyms start to drop. People think about Christmas. They're thinking about loads of other things. What would you kind of recommend as a plan to prevent that dip in the income? <clears throat> So, I guess in terms of dipping income, I, what I see the gyms doing a lot is, um, and my gym has done it, which was slightly annoying, is um, offering December for free. You're like, oh, okay, like, right. like a month ago. Yeah. Um, so that we can get people in ready for January. So, if you get them to sign up and pay a year now, one, it helps yeah. your cash flow in a time yes. where cash flow is down, but yeah. two, they're ready to launch in January. Um. I would say the best thing to do is have a forecast. So if you have a forecast, mm-hmm. we know that gyms do this a little bit through the year. You can see where those dips are and you can plan for it and make sure you have cash reserved for those period of times. So it's not just what cash do you need to pay for this and this. Actually, when the income drops, have you got the cash? So what I do is, um, and I recommend people do, is have pots or spaces whatever you wish to call it, mm-hmm. in your bank account. So I have, um, I would say, like, have a cash pot for VAT, corporation tax, PAYE, yeah. your profit, because you want to continue to pay yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, equipment and expenses. And by putting away amounts every single month, mm-hmm. when it comes to paying those large bills, you've got the cash there to pay. Oh, that's good and, idea. like, equipment needs repairing. Yeah. Uh, most gyms don't, don't no. save for all this yes. like it's gonna happen <laughs> so put the cash aside um i was just thinking because say the 7th of december there's a vat payment due yep. depending on your vat causes yeah you had a really good august september october that vat bill in december is going to be high of course so do you have the cash set aside ready to pay that vat bill yeah. in a month where income could have dropped so by having a cash forecast, you can see that happening and you can mm-hmm. prepare for that. So that's what um, I would suggest. For so forecasting helping. sounds scary. Yeah. So the word, yeah. It, yeah, the it whole is. word of forecasting. Oh, you know, it is it is a scary thought. How uh, how does someone start putting together the basis of a forecast? What what would you suggest is a good way to start? So assuming they've started looking at their costs already, yep. they've taken the brave step to open their bank account and review yep. their numbers or their accounting system, even better. Yep. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> I have like a really um, basic spreadsheet because like even that can be scary to people. Like I'm like, it's just the like income and outcome. They're like, mm. no. So I have a really basic spreadsheet and you can put your income lines in. So that could be go cardless, Stripe, blah, 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 yep. or from your CRM system, so from your membership system, put that into one section. This is all your income, yep. product income, whatever else you might sell, like rent, you know, PT rent, et cetera. And then I have the rest of the spreadsheet is broken down into all the items you may spend on. So insurances, staff, VAT, corporation tax, um, anything like Zoom, software, yeah, etc. It literally is like a massive list I've got, and you just start filling it in. So if you pay Zoom ten pounds a month, yeah. put ten pounds in every single month going out. Makes if sense. you know your VA payments are due this quarter, this quarter, this quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Estimate them, and even if you don't know, say you're on flat rate, that could be quite easy. Of course, but if you know it tends to be ten grand a month, even if that's not one hundred percent right, put that in as a starting basis. Ten, ten, ten every quarter. Um, and just start building it up. Mm-hmm. And as you do it, you will start to question things. You'll start to go, oh, we paid for this. Or, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. we paid for that. Oh, we've forgotten about that. What's that payment in the bank account too? Because sometimes it just says go cardless or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Stripe. You can actually start to go, oh, I'm going to look into that. And you will yeah. find that you get more inquisitive and yeah. more interested as you do it. Because that's just human nature, isn't it? It is, yes. And I think that kind of ties in very nicely to how we kind of started because it was kind of understanding your numbers. And I think, you know, we're talking about 
what would be the best piece of actionable advice you could give any any customer right now it sounds to me as it might just be forecasting so you do actually understand what your income is and what your spending might be would i be right on that yeah by by starting the forecast it will open up the door to everything else that i talk about Mm. as you start forecasting you will start questioning your costs which is what i refer to as money leaks you will start doing that as you start reviewing your costs and your income you will have questions that you will want to ask your accountant so Mm -hmm. one of my things is ask your accountant because one they're not always proactive and two it might be because you're not paying them enough to be proactive (laughs) yes that's very interesting one but once you start looking at it you will then go hmm why has the accountant done that or what does that mean so you'll start to ask the questions yeah you it will open the avenue for huh why was revenue up in that month what did we do did we spend more in marketing that month is that why six weeks down the line actually our income's gone up so you'll find by just starting to do this stuff it will open up the avenue and your confidence in asking other questions and looking at other stuff so start with the forecast and stop hiding from HMRC. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't run and hide, can you? <laughs> they will find you. <laughs> and I think, no, you know, I've seen it, you know, it doesn't work. But if you open up dialogue with them, you will find that sometimes penalties will get removed. You yeah. will find you can then have time to pay arrangements created. Yeah. They, you know, one of my clients has an astronomical amount they owe to HMRC. Right. But they open up the conversation with them. And now they've got a payment plan in over the next three years. Incredible. So, really? Over three years? That's amazing. Yeah. And if, you, if you're if you honest with them and you say to them, look, it's just impossible. Look, what can we do? Yeah. They, they might not give you exactly what you want, but they're definitely open to the conversation. So. Yeah. And I think post-COVID, it's really proven the point. And I've heard the similar stories from other people like you just mentioned. It really has been something that I do generally think that so many people – are scared of them but it's like with anything isn't it if you bother to pick up the phone they're not actually as scared as you think they might be um and they do generally want to help because actually whether we like it or not the government actually does want to keep you as a lifetime customer they want you to carry on paying right <laughs> and we do. Value. <laughs> forget that we kind of forget there's a lifetime value of this business being successful so this gym owner we want to have the vat we want to have the national insurance we need this money right so it's in their interest to make sure you survive as much as possible because, quite frankly, they don't want to see you fail because that's a loss of income to the government. It's an interesting yeah, way to look at it. It's not what people think about sometimes. Yeah, like that's it. Change your mindset round. If you think the government is going to lose so much, then you're going to have people unemployed and yeah. help people say about gyms and health and like suddenly there's a gym closed. You're having there's a bigger impact on the wider community. So yeah. yeah, change your mindset around. Like the government want you to operate because you're you're generating money for them. <laughs> exactly, you know, it's it's a real true thing that people don't actually think about it or even talk about it sometimes. So uh, I'm glad we did on that one, very much so. So I'm gonna it's kind of getting towards where where we're concluding a little bit, I suppose, on our chat today, which has been I gotta say, some really insightful um because you kind of you look at it from a very basic point of view debbie and if anyone's not using debbie they really should be and i'll come back to that again in a minute but you know the important thing about looking at what would you give is no a real positive thing to do versus something to avoid doing is no two things that you would recommend i think we might have touched on already but it'd be nice to summarize and say look now what's one great thing you could do today and what's one thing you should avoid doing today? <laughs> so, yeah, I think we have sort of t- touched on the break. So avoid did we, would be avoid, don't avoid HMRC, don't avoid your creditors. Mm. Because by speaking to them, you're more likely to come to a resolution that works for both of you. Whereas by hiding the letters, which does happen, <laughs> those horrible brown letters turn up on the door i don't like opening them either no no it's like what does this say (laughs) by opening it one you know what it says and two you can start to take action and by having that open conversation you can be in a position that you can sort something with them and that's going to help you massively because even just seeing that brown letter i can feel my stress levels go up of course because even as an accountant i'm like oh what do they want 
How thick is the letter? How thick is it? That's an interesting one. Brown envelope, but how thick is that brown envelope? Interesting. Yeah, I'm like, what could it be? <laughs> and uh, but you, you do, you get that like, oh, what, what do they want? Yeah. By opening it, you one ease your stress a little bit, and two, by taking action on it, you will ease your stress level so much more, so that you can focus on doing what you're good at. Yeah. The whole time you're spending time worrying, you're not focusing on generating income for the business. Yeah. And yeah. living the life that you want to live. So, yeah, stop avoiding HMRC. Um, something proactive you can do is just start looking at your finances. Mm. And actually, we've kind of spoken about that. So I'll, go, I'll say something different. No, it's all relevant. Foundations. Okay. <laughs> Look, start with the business foundations. So I have done a few talks recently. And mm -hmm. it's basic things like claim everything you're entitled to claim. Stop trying to do dodgy tactics so this gym owner said you could do this no no yeah 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 do the basics keep your receipts for every single cost yeah track your mileage so they'll they'll drive to say bookers or wherever and buy merchant they'll buy like water protein bars whatever. yeah they won't claim the mileage for those journeys like that is all a business deduction and it's, yeah. it's tax free cash in your pocket Simple things. Do yes. the simple things. Do them right. Do them properly. Do them all the time. <laughs> Getting yeah, to good habits, that, right? That's one of the best things you can do. And it, you think, put that through. Corporation tax comes down. Of course. So I drove up to a, court, a thing on Friday, £120 travel because of like the distance I went. Yeah. That's £120 in my pocket. Yeah. That's £120 off my profit. 100%. And then I bought a coffee. I bought my dinner. Um, and I bought a lunch, all deductible. Oh, I'll come out with you more often than Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's entertainment. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, that's <a> lot. <laughs> but just making sure you know what you can claim and that you're claiming it and yeah. keeping all your receipts because I'll stop talking in a minute, but one of my no, no, owners, carry on. It's great. They um, went back registered. We went back four years um, and claimed all their VAT. So it was a nightmare because she didn't have the receipts. We had to go back to suppliers. Wow. We had to treat through emails. It took ages, time that she didn't really have because she had to distract from looking at the business yeah. to doing this. But we then got 18 grand back from HMRC. So 18 keep grand your back. Receipts. Yes, keep your receipts. Holy moly. That's a hell of a lot of money, isn't it? So it was three years of lost opportunity, right? Uh, we went, so we done four years. We went back oh, sorry, four years. years. Wow. Four years on fixed assets, so gym equipment, uh, six months on services. So, say, like your subscription to Club of Right. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. Six months. So, by keeping your receipts, your claim, whereas one of them, she didn't have the receipt. We couldn't get hold of the supplier. And so we couldn't claim the VAT on it. And you were like looking oh. at it going, £600 of VAT that we've missed yeah. out on. It's scary, so, isn't it? And that's a really good one. Uh, absolutely loving the fact that someone's been so successful with your help to get something they would never have got without your help. Uh, and yeah. I think that's a bit I'd like to sort of point out is that having the right advisors in your business is so, so important. And Debbie's just given an ex excellent example of why she's the right advisor to a fitness industry. You know, that's why we're proud to have Debbie as a, you know, an approved partner with Club Right, because she knows her business. She understands your business in terms of if you're listening to this today as a gym owner or a personal trainer or whatever you're doing in the fitness industry, she understands it. And if she hasn't seen it already, I'll be very surprised because you've already really been there, seen it, done it, should we say, as it were. But it's those scenarios and those stories that are so impactful. And uh, I'd really like to say thank you so much for what you've shared with us today, Debbie. It's been absolutely awesome. And if you're not, currently using debbie and uh as services of southbourne accountancy you flipping well should be because there's some absolute nuggets of information here and support through some really simple strategies that you can start to implement today i'd say debbie wouldn't you yes definitely so you can find me on facebook or linkedin and my current freebie is um, all around cash forecasting. So if you want that, I will share the link with Wayne so he can share it with you guys. So good news is for those that want to find out more about how to run their business and the finances, 
all of the information and how to contact Debbie will be in our show notes. You'll be able to see later. Thanks for listening. We really want to help as many business owners in the fitness industry as we can. So if you know someone who could also benefit from listening to our episodes, remember to share it with them. That's really important. I want to get that message out there. And if you're enjoying conversations with Club Right, hopefully you are, um, don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts.